lift those hands very well high in the air and give God a mighty praise. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Give Jesus a mighty praise. time to give him higher than we give the celebs of town, than we give the models, than we give those, those um, hype men. I want you to lift up your hands above your head and give King Jesus a mighty shout of praise. Come on, give him praise. Ephesians, we haven't uh, started looking at uh, narrowly at uh, some of the few uh, subtopics that we chose to look at. We are still looking at the overview of the book of Ephesians, the epistle, the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians or the church at Ephesus. You must understand that when Paul is writing this letter and when indeed when Paul is writing all his letters, he's not writing to a building. He's not writing to concrete. He's writing to brethren. That's why he's saying saints. Saints, I told you yesterday, are separated, chosen ones. The people that God has separated and we say for the manifestation of his glory. We say Paul who was an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ according to the will of God. We say he was not choosing himself, but he was chosen by God. It was not of his own choosing. It was by the choosing of God. God choose, chose him. And we read Ephesians 1. He says, by the will of God, Galatians 1, verse 1. Uh, Galatians 1. Give us Galatians 1, verse 1. Galatians, the Paul's epistle to the Galatians. What does it say? Read with me. Paul, an apostle, not from men, not through man, but Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from, uh, from the dead. Remember, Paul, an apostle, parenthesis there, is describing what an apostle is, isn't it? If you read, you are English guys, right? You do English? If you put something in bracket, means it is explaining something outside the bracket, isn't it? Uh, the parenthesis there. So it's explaining that apostleship of Paul is not by the will of man, it's not through man, but it's by the will of God. It is God who called Paul to be an apostle for him. And we say now, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, meaning that he didn't wake up one morning and say, I want to be an apostle. He was chosen by God to carry the gospel to the Gentiles. Uh, and so he's writing to the church at Ephesus. Uh, but I thought I would explain that a little bit, what the church means. The church would not be a building, would not be this. This is not church, but you are church. Hallelujah. If you, have, you want to have this revelation, it means, then it does not, it means therefore that you do not come to church. The church comes. Eh? On Sunday, we don't go to church. We take church to a place. So you have this mindset. You shift in your mindset that when you are at your workplace or in school or in college, you have taken church to school. Ah. Hallelujah. So you're not saying, no, I'll only do, uh, do well or conduct myself well when I am in church. That's a religious mindset. But if you are liberated, you know that I am church. The Bible says, he that receives me, 
me and my father will come and abide in him. Therefore, that means God does not dwell. Isaiah says God does not dwell in the building made by the hands of men. He says, what kind of building can you make for me? Yeah? Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. There is no building that can accommodate me. But in his divine wisdom, he has chosen that he dwells in you. So you are the carrier of God. Hallelujah. That means wherever you go, you take the church there. So when he's saying, I write to the church at Ephesus, it's not a building. It's the saints that gather. And throughout the New Testament, you're going to realize when Paul is writing, he says, the church that meets at, that means wherever men and women of God meet at, that becomes church. So wherever two or three are gathered, wherever you are meeting, if it is in your house, if it is uh, besides the road, the church has gathered. Hallelujah. It's so important for you to note that because if you note that, then your whole perception of living for God changes. You not look for people uh, uh, so that you behave or conduct yourself in a good way. Oh, pasi ako api, nani ako api. You'll know that wherever you are, that's where church is. And God is your witness. And God is your partner wherever you are. So it doesn't matter who has surrounded you. Because you know that you are surrounded more than everybody else. The Bible tells us that seeing that we are surrounded, the verse we read yesterday, I think it was uh, Pastor Jack who was teaching us, seeing that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, saying, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that entangles or ensnares us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, for, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of God the Father. He's saying, because we are surrounded, the witnesses that are surrounding us are not your friends here. They are not your pastors. They are not your leaders. You have other witnesses. And therefore, if you know that, that means you carry God's presence. Did you know that most of the people who have manifested God, who have lived for God, and created significant difference in the Bible, talking about Joseph, talking about Daniel, talking about Michelle, Hanani, and, and Azaria, or later named as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All those people were very young, 17, 13, 14 years old. Eh? And most of them were not even in the Levitical priesthood. Most of them were not priests or Levites. There were people in the marketplace. There were either governors working for government. They were in business. So this idea and mentality that uh, is only the pastors and the bishops that are going to manifest God or to be anointed is a fallacy from the devil. You, wherever you are, as a student, you can be the carrier of the presence of God. Can you say amen? And you don't wait until you are so old to, to be anointed. Looking at Bible examples, you are so old. People were carrying this, this anointing at 13 years old. How, how old are you? Some of you are twice that age. Imagine. So don't wait for another year to say, oh, I want to be old. No, you are a carrier now. So he says an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the will of God and to the saints at Ephesus and to the faithful ones. He says, blessed be God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And we talked about that. He says, he that chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world. He says, unto the adoption of his son. He says that we have now become the sons of God through adoption. He says that we now may manifest the glory of God. Because now God has paid the price for us, forgiven our sins through the, uh, his redemption. And Pastor Jack too, yesterday was talking about redemption here yesterday. And so we learned about that. He said then we were predestined and we were defining what predestination is. That you are predestined. 
Uh, you are predestined. You yourself, God predestined you, chose you before the foundation of the world. So you did not choose him yesterday. No, he, he had that before uh, the foundation of the world. That's why Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I chose you so that you might go out and bear fruit, meaning that you manifest the glory of God. And we got into his prayer, he says, uh, Ephesians 1.15, he says, now he prays for them. He says, since I heard of your faith in God and your love for the saints, I cease not to make mention of you in my prayers. Meaning that Paul was praying for them all the time. He was saying that the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Meaning that your eyes may be open that you may know him. Uh, he says that your eyes being enlightened that you may know the hope of your calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 20, and the exceedingly great power to us as who believe according to his mighty working power that he wrought in Jesus when he raised him up from the dead and has set him above principalities, powers, dominions and has set him Lord over all, even the church. As we said now in chapter 2, he says, you that were alien, meaning that you were debased in the filthiness and uncleanness of your mind, God paid his price for you. He came down for you, paid the ultimate price for you, and has taken you. Chapter 2, verse 6, he said, now he has lifted us together to be seated with him in heavenly places. Because he, all this has happened through grace. Chapter 2, verse 8, he says, no, because, For it is by grace that you are saved through faith, but it's not by your works. So God has saved you, has delivered you, paid the price ultimate for you. And chapter 2, verse 10, now he says that you are his workmanship. Workmanship, meaning that God has made you by his own hands, uh, for good works. He has made you so that you, uh, you, you get into good works. You produce good works, which prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Remember, there are works that God has prepared before the foundation of the earth that you should walk in them. And we talked about your fashion. God has fashioned you before the foundation of the world and has set the works by which you should walk. So you don't walk in the works of somebody else. No. He said you, they were prepared before you, before the foundation of the world, that you walk in them. So you don't walk in somebody else's foundation. Uh -uh. You walk in yours. So he says you were aliens before, and he gives uh, 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 an illustration there. He says now he has he is building you up as a building block. Now you are living stones by which he's using to build his temple. And he's the head and all of us are members. Uh, he has chosen us from every kindred, every tongue, every nation. Revelation 5, 9 and 10, he says, Worthy is the lamb who was slain and has, has redeemed us from every tribe, every nation. You know, and has made us kings and priests together with him. So that he has chosen us from every tribe and every background and has brought us into the family of God. Now we are different because God has called us. And when you move to uh, chapter 3, Paul now comes to a place and says he wants to share with us how privileged he is to be the carrier of this mystery because he's calling it a mystery, a secret that has not been understood by the hearts of men. He says, but I am privileged, being the least of all men, that I, as an apostle, the least of them all, that I should be a carrier of this gospel, this mystery to the Gentiles. He says, I have carried this gospel. That through the people that God has ordained, that when they come together, that now the principalities and powers, chapter 3, verse 10, that the principalities and powers may know the power of God by the church. You see, that now the manifold wisdom of God might be known to principalities and powers by the church. Meaning that I'm now going to use these chosen ones, the people that I have called to myself as a church, to show principalities and powers how strong I am. Oh, praise God. 
So you do not, once you understand this revelation, my sisters and brothers, you are not worried about the world and what people can do. I was talking to somebody on Sunday, and she was saying, ah, that, that, is, uh, that girl is involved in witchcraft, so I can't allow my people to go near them. I said, no. If people are involved in witchcraft or things that you don't understand, it is them to run away from where you are. It is not you to run away from where they are. Who is powerful? If you know somebody is uh, fishy like this and you're running away, you're hiding from them, you don't want to say hi to them, who is ruling who? That, that doesn't sound uh, freedom for me. It doesn't sound powerful at all, isn't it? But we stand there and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Please, let that get out of your mouth into your heart. Because once you understand that, you'll know that I, as the church, Christ dwells inside of me. God is going to show how powerful he is that the manifold of wisdom of God might be known to principalities and powers through me. That now I am not a candidate of those spells people say, of those witchcrafts, of those funny, funny things people say. No. What is the work of redemption? The work of redemption that the devil is trampled under my feet. Praise God. And we're going to look at that when we go to chapter 6. It's talking about, now be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. So you cannot be strong in the Lord if you're still shy and fearful. Eh? You say, oh, if I didn't do this, somebody will look at me with bad eyes. Seriously. So the manifold wisdom of God might be known to principalities and powers by the church. Because he has ordained you, he has fashioned you. Now he wants you to show them. Because God cannot descend here and show people how they are, uh, powerful he is. But he uses me to manifest his glory. You understand? And so he has called us as uh, workmanship, his own workmanship that we show forth his glory. And that now that is where, when he comes to the end of that chapter, chapter 3 verse 20, he says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly um, and abundantly above what we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Unto him be glory and honor. You see, Unto him, he's able to do beyond what we think, beyond what we can ask. No, God's power is beyond our imagination. Our system here is not enough to accommodate the manifold wisdom of God. And God is not limited by our prayers. That is why he says, Romans 8, 28, he says, For we know not what we ought to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit, that is the Spirit of God, maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. He says, verse 29, For he that searches the hearts understands the mind of the Spirit. Isn't it? For he maketh intercession for us in accordance to the will of God. That means the Spirit can only pray inside of me according to the manifold will of, of God. There are things that my heart cannot fathom, comprehend, understand about what God can do. Because God is beyond my imagination. God is beyond my thinking. God is beyond my asking. Because with human beings we are limited. You know, you think, and we are, we are going to talk that, about that when we're talking about prayer. And the prayers of Paul are within chapter 1, 15 to 22, and chapter 3, verse 1 to 23. The prayers. When you talk about prayers, you know, human beings look at have formed God in their own image and likeness. They know if, guys, let, let's hold hands. I need 1,000 for something. So they hold hands and they pray some two, uh, two minute prayer. But th then when they need like a million, they say, oh, I say, now we need to add fasting. Because they believe that one million takes a lot of energy for God. Yeah? That God needs to, you know, Please, <laughs> the same strength that delivers 10 shillings is the same strength that delivers a billion. God does not sweat. Eh? God does not sweat. He says, God, 
healing in Jesus' name. You are healed. She says, I don't know if you have cancer. To eat a man of God. Sasa umesizi kuwa man of God. Because you believe, you are in itaji power. The same strength God uses to heal headache is the same strength that he uses to heal fibroid. The same strength that he uses to heal any kind of disease. You understand? God is not limited. It's not like your eyes. Ah. Uh, so that is why he says uh, beyond what we think, beyond what we can ask. Our prayer language is limited. And some of us, it's not even prayers. It's just the religious hoobrush that we have we have heard from people and we are repeating ourselves like robots. Isn't it? We have never learned how to pray. Because we just learned it from the, the guys who invited us to the club. And we saw them repeating it. So we just, <laughs> we just started, Father God, I come to you, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. I come to you, I pray, Father God. Why don't, don't you just talk the way you usually talk? Hmm? Utter the prayers you are making does not even make sense to yourself. By the way. And that is why most of us, if prayer to them is a burden. Because prayer, you have not come to a revelatory knowledge to understand that you are talking to a friend. And when you are talking to a friend, an intimate friend, there is a way you talk. True? But when you are talking to, some, to somebody distance, somebody who is far away, <laughs> then, then become a Pentecostal. You think it is... It, their father has a hearing problem. God has a hearing problem and you have children, many children that are screaming for attention. Mm. Everybody to the top of their voice. They come for a prayer, Kesha. By the morning they don't have their voices. Because it's loud. The louder you scream, the better attention you get. Mm? Tell somebody to pray. You, it's just talking normally, usually in whispers, doesn't have a loud voice, doesn't talk a louder but tell them to pray. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> you wonder what happened to your voice <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> we'll be talking about prayer. Huh? Says now exceedingly abundantly above. He says as far as the earth is removed from the heaven, so are your thoughts. The thoughts of God are beyond our imagination. The thoughts of, of God are beyond our thinking. They are bigger, they are greater than your greatest thoughts. If you can only be stupid enough to believe that what God says is true, uh, you'll have beyond your imagination. Now, I told you that this book is divided into two, chapter one, chapter three, to chapter three is talking about what has happened inside. And we've been talking about that. What has happened inside of us? We are rich. We are chosen. Before the foundation of the world, we are redeemed out of generations. The price was paid for us and is able to do in us. He says, he says that he is able to do beyond, exceedingly, above what we think or imagine, according to the power that works within us. Now from chapter 4, he's talking about now what ought to happen to your community. Now that this, this reality has happened inside of you, what should happen to your community now? That is why there is, there is a connecting word there, uh, therefore there. It says, I therefore. Give us chapter 4 verse 1. What does it say? Having said all that I have said. It says, I, read with me. I therefore, the prison of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Now he's going, he has opened a verse. And how do you know that there is a separation here? Go back to the last verse of chapter 3. Chapter 3. Unto him, unto him. Chapter 3. Read with me, it says. World without end. Amen. You see how he has ended the first part? Are you seeing? Have you ever read this, this verse before? Huh? I will just I will just keep up at your personal study. I'm out of the Ephesians. Muko api Leviticus. 
Because I know Vijana, you mentioned some books, Leviticus. Awesome. Iyo next ni, tutakuja iyo lesson next. Ukingia kama John. But he ends, and, and uh, you'll, you'll notice the, the same one, if he's speaking about the book of Psalms, for example, is divided into five books. Every time it, uh, the first book ends, it will give you this, forever and ever, amen, the end of first book. Forever and ever, amen, the second book. So there are five books collected together called the book of Psalms. Now, if you see this, it says, now therefore. Now I want to show you that after what has happened has happened, now I want you to walk worthy of your vocation. That vocation, vocation, what has been entrusted to you. Now I want you by your walk that people shall see before you tell them, huh? Before you tell, this is a doctor. No, you see what he's doing. You say, this must be a doctor. When you see a teacher teaching, you say, oh, this is a teacher. Now I want you to walk worthy of that calling. So chapter 4 is talking about now that you have, what has happened inside of you has happened and the transformation has happened. Now I want you to know that we are gathered together in a family as one. He talks about one spirit, there is one God, there is one Lord. He says we are called to one faith. We are one calling. And there is a unity of us. We are united by a faith. We are united by a Lord. We are united by a spirit. We are united by God. All of us, we've come to a family. The family of believers. Now, in this family of believers, there is somebody that did something that because he ascended, when he ascended, he gave gifts to men. Huh? When he ascended, he gave gifts to men, chapter 4, verse 8. And the same one who ascended also descended. That means he descended to take captivity captive and ascended on high. But when he ascended, he gave gifts to men. And we... The unity that God is talking about is not a uniformity. People confuse unity with uniformity. The fact that we are united does not mean that we should be similar. Eh? I should not look like you. You should not look like me. But we are united in faith. You understand? We are not producing clones. The idea is not about producing clones. Other Francis's, no. The idea is that in our di diversity, we are united by purpose. We are united by... So we must be in a place where we accept people to be different. Not the same. If you, talk, you don't talk like me, I should not have a problem with that. It doesn't mean you are wrong, it just means you are different. Uh -huh. So you don't look to a friend, you don't form friendship according to similarities. Or identicals. Uh -uh. You form according to the unity. That means you are united by faith. But you are not identical. And that is the riches of the gospel. Because if you gather together and you are different. I am different from him. He is different from me. That means we are able to add something. If he is the same like me. Then one of us is unnecessary. You understand? So if you have friends. Oh I like... I like Johnny. He's just like me. Sometimes he thinks like me. One of you is unnecessary. Look for another friend. Because you must have a friend who also tells you things that you wonder. He'll be helping you, isn't it? But the one who thinks like you do. What, what, what addition? Yeah? We are similar somehow. We have so much in common. Please. <laughs> you have so much in common. Release him to look for another friend. Because life would be so boring if I know what she will be thinking about. Imagine she's my friend and I know. He says, by the way, By the way, tunaweza prepare food. Next time, mimi ni talala, tunitaona chenye unafikiria madam. Usha sikia watu kama chenye mutamua. What do you mean? Since we are different, but we are one. We have one Lord, we have one spirit, we have one God, we are united by one faith. And when he ascended, chapter 4, verse 11, 
He gave us gifts. Those gifts are in form of apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. These are fivefold ministries that are released into the church. Verse 12. Why? Because of the building of the church, for the edification of the church, for the perfecting of the saints. He says, until we come to the unto a perfect man, we are looking for the unity of the faith. Eh? We are looking for the unity of faith. He says, until all of us, why, why are we different? So that we build each other up to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. All of us are building towards this so that we look like Christ. We are not here as a social organization. Eh? We are not here for entertainment. Our purpose is one, that all of us look like Christ. So our idea and our purpose as a church is not to make you happy. The Bible has never talked to us about happiness. <laughs> that you are here to be happy. Uh -uh, that, is, that is not God. Look for somebody else. In fact, God's idea is to make you unhappy. Because every time you are comfortable, he, he moves you. <laughs> when the children of Israel settled, they had a problem settling down. They gathered Gath and they say, Ay, this place is dark, dull, whatever. After a few months, they start joining. Oh, something good can happen here. We can learn a farm. We can do this. When they have now found the roadmap, God says, now tomorrow we are off. We are going to the next place. Hmm? So God has never four keys to happiness. Uh -uh, that's not God. That's a motivational speaker. Because growth, growth is never comfortable. And how do you know you are growing when you are not comfortable? Growth is never comfortable. So all these people are here to build us to look like Christ. Eh? Not to feel happy. <laughs> eh? Church, Leo, I took happy. Uh -uh. Church was never meant to you. To, a, a good church will make you uncomfortable. Either to push yourself to grow or to live. If you go to a place and you are just comfortable, live, live, run. You should leave that place either knowing, hey, hey, I need to pull up my socks. I need to push. Eh? I need to push. Or I need to leave that place. I cannot hold it anymore. But a place where we are just, hey, to look on a fan. Because we are not love industry. Eh? I would have enrolled and maybe go, go, uh, gone for training and started another company. I cannot be a minister in church to make you laugh. Okay, we have seen him funny. Seriously? Because if I'm funny, I'm supposed to be paid somewhere else, isn't it? What would I be doing here? My job is to push you to look like Christ. That's my assignment, isn't it? And if you cannot be like Christ here, go to some, somewhere else. We are not looking for membership. That to look for wengi, wase walikam. Uh -uh. <laughs> Go! If you are not growing, if you stay in a place one year and you are not growing, leave, leave. Go to another place. If they care about you, they will tell you, Adam Alimu Anasema, Mimi stuck Saidia. Enda kwa ele class indeed. Sawa. Yeah. Nivizuru kurifa. Ii kesi yako is different. Go to another place. Because kuna watu tu, they just want to be comfortable. And then, number two, also, there are people who just want to be busy. Your activity in church and your busyness does not equal growth. The fact that you are so busy in church does not mean you are growing. There are people who are doing so many things. Ako huku, ako huku, ako in all departments. Anybody who wants to volunteer here? Hey. Anybody who wants? Hey, nani ana grow? Ha grow? Ako too busy. Because how do you know somebody is growing? Christ-likeness. Is he looking like Christ? Hmm? Because talent, you can just be talented. You can carry cameras like this, but st still just leap around and be busy. Then you think I'm growing. The only problem is that now, if you have a good accommodating system, is that you learn to live in that system without growing. 
The problem of accommodation and adapting is that when you have a system where people are not growing, they learn to be comfortable in they are not growing. And the church moves on. The church will be the most, be, uh, most uncomfortable place. There is no one who met Jesus and remained the same. Either you changed or you left. Have you read scripture? They say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or, send away this guy. But you cannot see, uh, sit there, sermon after sermon. They say, uh, me, I love church. That's not church you are loving. Hmm? You are just attending a comedy show for free, without tickets. But you should grow. The fact that you are in ministry, he says, he called, he chose unto himself, 12, that number one, they may be with him. Number two, they may go and preach. You cannot go and preach before you are with him. He said, whatever I've heard him say in the secret, I declare in the rooftops. You are not qualified to declare in the rooftops if you've not heard him in the secret. Young man, God is calling you to transform. Not to be active. You understand? God is not just calling you for attendance. Have a passion to grow. Have a passion to look like Christ. If you read these stories of what has happened, the move of God and the transformation of people, don't just come and attend church. No, come with a passion to grow. And if you come with a passion to grow, you are going to grow. You understand? But if you are looking for an entertainment theater, Jesus was never comfortable with people. You either changed, transformed, or you left. He didn't have membership. You understand? So it's not membership we are looking for. At it will be a thousand. A thousand for what? Because I don't want to have a thousand demons in my, in my church. I either have ten disciples. It's discipleship we are looking for. Christ-likeness. Unto a perfect man. Edification of the saints. Unto a perfect man. Until we come to the unity of the faith. And we come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. We are leading people towards the stature of Christ. Not feeling high. God never called people to happiness. Did he say happy? Even the word happy, blessed, happy are you, does not mean in the English translation happy. It says blessed. Matthew chapter 5. Even when he's saying happy are those, it does not mean happiness that you think about. Feeling nice. No. Blessed are you. The word blessed there is a very rich word. Does not mean happy. That's a wrong translation. God has never called you to happiness. If you came here to be happy, you're in the wrong place. God called you to be uncomfortable. Because <laughs> only uncomfortability causes you to grow. Growth is uncomfortable. Have you moved houses? You're going to a bigger place. You're expanding something. It's always... And God never settled to say, this is the place. Every time the children of Israel settled in a place, they say, tomorrow we are moving. Where is this? And they start to adjust. Uh, uh, they say, now we can manage. We know where our water is. We have made friends. We have now. He says, tomorrow we are break up. We are moving. Hmm? And some of us is just attendance. <laughs> we just want... The, the more activity we do, the more we think we are growing. So you are in media, you are in worship, you are in what you say, hey, I'm grow. Squeeze in a mungu sana. Please. You better resign from all those things and jo just go and sit down and think about your growth. Hmm? About your growth. Because if you are, the children of Israel are going around, around a mountain. If you saw you had a problem last year, is the same problem you're having today. That means you're going around something. You are rotating something. Hmm? I can't put my hands off this girl. You are going around the, the same thing. Your pastor should not stand and say, no, don't do like that. Don't conduct yourself with that girl like that. Seriously, we are taught of the Lord. Where is your conscience? Where is the gift of God upon your life? Church cannot be built by rules and regulations. They say in the last covenant, in the new covenant, they shall be taught of the Lord. It's the Lord that will be telling you this is wrong. You don't need a reverend to follow you and say, no, don't touch her like that. 
But today we have positions in church that the Bible never envisaged. Hmm? Called a supervisor. Kwa nini unashika huyo hivyo? Kwa nini unaambia huyo hivyo? Kwa nini even in a youth conference like this we have to when when you think people are going to wake up in the morning come and fall on the ground here and worship God lift up their hands they're just waiting to wake up and and see who to hug. Huh? Dying for it because they are suffering acceptance. They have some emotional problem. Their childhood was uh, messed up. So they are looking for mama. Huh? <laughs> Before you even meet, his hand is like this. Huh? Say, eh, please. He says what? Edification of who? The saints. Unto a perfect man. Unto a perfect man. Until you come to the fullness, when you look at you, you see Christ. Huh? You should walk like Enoch. Enoch walked with God. He was 10%, walked with God 20, walked with God 50. Until you could look for Enoch, you don't see him. He was no more. That does not mean the new covenant that he is taken or died. No, they just look at John. They don't see John. They're wondering what happened to this guy. But most of us are still full of ourselves. <laughs> Edification of the saints. And that is what he's now talking about. We are many. And now he, he, he tells us that now because you are like that, we have gotten into a new system. Now instead of lying, now we are telling the truth. Instead of gossiping, no, we are edifying, building one another. Instead of uh, getting drunk with wine, we are getting drunk with the Holy Spirit. Instead of anger, eh, we are loving. Instead of revenge, now we are forgiving. He's telling the brethren, now that's the conduct. He says, now walk worthy of the calling by which you received. That calling now, that's how you are walking. Chapter 4. In chapter 5, he continues with it. Now he tells us about now you need to be, uh, one of them is singing. Now there is a song inside of you. Because of what has happened from chapter 1 to chapter 3, of what has happened inside of you, now there is a song in your heart. You don't only sing individually. You don't wait for a praise and worship song. Or you don't wait for a worship team. You know, sometimes... And nowadays we've given a worship team the job that is not for, for them. They're not supposed to drag you into his presence. They're supposed to direct you, show you a direction, and then you move. They're not supposed to direct you on what to do. The worship in your heart is supposed to lift every part of your body. Uh, that there's a worship, enough worship in your, in your body, to, in your heart to lift up your hands. It's not the worship team to tell you now lift up your hand. No. Uh, you are just a, a dead body. But as you worship, your hands just lift. Just go. Isn't it? Some of us say, Kwa your conference, ni mauna God. Aujauna God. There is no one who saw God in the Bible and remained standing. Everybody was like, like I'm dead. Eh? Like, you know, nauna God. Nauna. Uh-uh. Yo, mauna mtu. Unauna silly. Because nobody saw God and remained standing. Nobody so good. <laughs> Do you know what being drunk is? He says, why does he co connect drinking wine with drinking the Holy Spirit? When you are drunk, do you know a drunk guy? The problem why you cannot share the gospel in a matter is not because you are shy. Uh -uh, you are not drunk. Because a drunk at the King Matatu, I will thank conductor. Can I talk to these people? Apana? An answer to Wase. The alcohol. So the spirit does like that. The spirit himself, the Bible says, gives you courage. He says, pray for us that by the spirit we might get boldness to preach, isn't it? Boldness comes from where? The spirit. Not self-esteem, motivation or speaking. Say that the problem is your background. Now we work emotional intelligence is what you're lacking. Please. Eh? What emotional intelligence did Peter have? 
Peter was scared to a house girl, could not approach him. But on the day of Pentecost, he said, come on guys, gather everybody in Jerusalem. Let me tell them something. Which class did he attend? How many sessions? Self-esteem sessions. How many self-esteem sessions did he attend? Yeah? <laughs> because the difference is the word of God has life. It's spirit and life. It has the power to transform. A motivation speaker is that's words, knowledge. You have knowledge. Lakini, you don't have the power to actualize the knowledge. Hmm? So when the Spirit of God came, and says, now do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, oh, courage, you are walking. Do you know, pombe ina change your vision. Did you know that? Kwa nini unonanga ule mwenyamelewa anatembea hivi? Kwa sababu there are things he's seeing. There are things he's seeing, isn't it? Naenda <laughs> eh? Kuna kitu anaona. Aisee enda straight. There are things he's seeing. And the spirit in you must change your vision, the way you see things. The, there are things you are seeing, you see. Martin Luther King Jr. said there is a, it's dangerous for a man that fights with a green on his face. Yani mtu unapigana na 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 smile. Eh? Hey, boss. Eh? Si unakasirika sana. Unashindwa. There is something this guy knows that I don't know. Isn't it? That's how you should fight with the devil because you have already seen. Your eyes are being enlightened that there is something you are able to see. So when you are in a dark room with a kagal, this temporal place does not matter. You have seen something. So Joseph says, how can I do this against my God? I can't. Not against pastor. Some of us, most of us are living in the Levitical priesthood. We think we are serving a high priest. <laughs> but the curtain has been broken. All of us have access. We are going to talk about that in Ephesians chapter 2. He says, now we freely have access by the same spirit. The access that a reverend has is the same access that a form one has. There is no difference. I come to the altar. Please, come from the Old uh, Testament mentality. There is no altar here. The altar is here. God has come to dwell with man. Now let me ask you, if the altar is here, what will happen when you go to high school? You will be dead for three months. Until you come back. But if you know. So, you don't go to church. The church gathers. You, you take the church to a building. You say, <laughs> because where you are is the church. Hmm? So when you go to that high school, you say, God's presence has arrived. The church has come. The church has opened school. And the power of God is going to move in this place. I remember most of us have Levitical priesthood. We wait. I've come. There is a young man who came to me. I don't know if he's here. He says, I want you to pray with me. He says, let's read scripture, then we are going to pray. Okay? Let's read scripture. Because I usually don't do the therapies. You know the therapies that I'm working with somebody for long. We are praying for... <laughs> please, you can pray for yourself. I pray with people. I don't pray for people. Hmm? We agree in prayer. That's my, not my job. My job is to teach you the word and then you practice it by yourself. You understand? And in fact, if you know the pastor has been successful is when you don't need him. When you can do without him. I know a child of God has grown if you're not calling me. I'm going through this. Can you pray for me? No, I, I know you're still a baby. But if you know, pastor, this devil came, I handled him, no problem. I'm just giving you information. I know, yes. Uh, that's, that's somebody who has grown. You understand? But, so, if you come to this place, he says, now you be drunk. First of all, vision it of Auti. Then, wine in a toa height. Si juu kama mtu anajua ukiwa drunk, uneza toka 15th floor. Ukasema me, I can fly. Me, I can fly. Mtu anajua hivo? Unajua hivo? Me, I can fly. Ioni being drunk. 
ukiwa drunk vizuri there is no sensing of height height aiko that's why when you get into the spirit john 3:8 he it says uh, it's like the wind the wind bloweth with where, where it wants eh? you hear the sound thereof but you can't tell whence it cometh from where it goes to so is the man of the spirit hmm? man of the spirit ana height ana obstacle ana anaweza ruka anywhere thinking yake watu soba hawezi muelewa shida ni kwamba watu wanakuelewa sana if you find a carnal mind understanding you you are in the same level hmm kan huyu jamaa siku hizi tamuelewi anaongea juu ya nini unaona umeanza ku grow lakini ukupata aki tuna love Johnny let's hang together nini cuz when you're born again you don't tell your friends i don't need you anymore no they will just go kwa sababu anaona huyu lugha tunaongea na vitu anaongea na mahali anaruka eh sisi tunatumia stairs yeye anaruka tu so he so he says now you are different now you are not drunk with wine you drunk with yes now a good teacher uses an example he says now i want you to show you because of the the natural the practicality of life with the things you see now i want to show you how you walk a man of the spirit is like a woman a woman submits to her husband and that now she submits to her husband not because she is less but submission means organizing your authority under somebody else she is still powerful because she was not created after like the theology we have they were created at the same time god created male and female on the day that he created a woman is also not a rib because that's a wrong theology when you are using mud to form some something there's this thing they they use nowadays the little kids to form things in school what do they call it plasticine isn't it if you formed a man for example with hands and everything and you realize i need to form another person and you took part of their hands you remove part of the hands you formed it and form another person isn't it then you break the man because you want to reform him right and you form him are you going to call the one you formed a hand uh, uh, and i'm i'm just asking because you've gone to school the, the problem is that most of us think for you to be a good christian you must divorce your mind kill your brains you can't call that guy a hand isn't it he is a full human being so when you remove the a, 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 a rib that's why we don't have less ribs <laughs> so He says I want to use this example. He says um, a, a woman submits. She is not less. So so she's not under. They are equal partners, but she has organized herself under the authority of somebody else. That is submission. And this man is going to love her and give himself his life for him. And and that's why Paul says but I not I do not talk about man and woman but i talk about the church he says and is a mystery so he's not talking about marriage i know we used to preach about marriage but he's talking about a deeper mystery he's talking about you because of what has happened inside of you you organize yourself under the authority of somebody else you are under authority so he gives an example of a wife and a husband and then he gives an example of children and their parents he says obey your Yeah. and he uses another example of master and servant he's giving an example because a good teacher must give you classwork isn't it say he teaches you then he gives you classwork what is classwork that we do it together i show you how it is done isn't it then i give you homework so that you take it home you practice what i have taught you true so he's using that example all the way to chapter 6 After he has finished that he says now I want to show you uh, that remember we read in Ephesians 3:10 he says that now the manifold of wisdom of God might be known to principalities and powers by the church meaning I want to show principalities and powers how strong and powerful I am through the church now he says chapter 6 verse 10 now be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and when he's talking about the spiritual armor he's not talking about a guy who is in a prayer closet 
he's talking about a guy who is at the marketplace. Because from chapter 4 to chapter 6, he's talking about conduct, meaning that 1 to 3 is happening in church, the change that is happening inside of you. Chapter 4 to chapter 6 is happening outside in the field as you demonstrate the word of God. So, chapter 6, verse 10, about spirit, uh, the, the, the spiritual armor is not talking about spiritual warfare. He's not talking about spiritual warfare. He's talking to you about the marketplace. <laughs> and that is why when we talk about, I think we'll start talking about prayer tomorrow, people say, I pray every day for two hours, three hours, and you say, hey, that is a strong guy. But then I'll show you how to pray 24 hours because you are supposed to be in prayer 24 hours. Not two hours, not one hour. And some of you, even 30 minutes is a problem. Hmm? <laughs> But you need to move that. And because once you are in the new covenant, you don't invite God. He dwells inside of you, isn't it? That's why you don't open and close a meeting. You are in God's presence 24-7. You are just changing location of his, your interaction with him. <laughs> and you don't invite him because you are thinking he has not been there. You understand? You don't say, we invite you to this meeting. Where has he been? <laughs> he's always there you're just changing because when you're in a matatu you're in God's presence manifested in a different way that's why David says I am forever before your presence forever, you can be forever not only in a conference if I go into something else I'm going to disturb my time so let me just end here pastor and we pick it up from there tomorrow Thank you.